Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Air Gunner Magazine and Shooting and Country TV. Welcome to Life at the Range. Okay, before we get started today, a little apology. Um, for those of you who are tuning in to see the HW98 strip down video, I'm afraid that's been delayed. Um, basically, I was halfway through making the video and I realized that I wasn't 100% sure on what I was doing. So instead of just punting out a video that I might have some incorrect information, I've put that on the back burner for a couple of weeks so that I can make sure that I give you all the correct information. Um, also, I had a request from, uh, from one of our shooters who said that with the, uh, the Not The World Championships coming up in just a few days, is there any chance I could do a supported kneeling and shooting video? So I thought I'll get that done today, get it out on Thursday, so anyone who's shooting at the weekend can watch it and hopefully it'll help them put in a better score. So with all that in mind, welcome to Life at a Range and let's get on with some kneeling and standing supported shots. Cheers. Okay, so a supported kneeler or stander, it will often be done against a tree, a nice silver birch, or you might have a pallet, you might have um, a stake in the ground. There are many different things that they can use as support. Now, a couple of things to remember. You get kneel and stands, and you get standing only. Now, if it's a standing only shot, and we're talking about supported kneelers and standers, if it's a, if it's a supported stand only, it can go out to 30 yards with a 25 mil kill zone, and you can go out to 35 yards with a uh, with a 35 or 40 mil kill zone. If it is a supported kneeler or stander, it can still only go out to 30 yards with a 25 mil kill zone, but it can go out to 40 yards with a 35 and 40 mil kill zone. Now. A lot of people when they're coming into the sport will assume that because when they do an unsupported kneeler or an unsupported stander, because often the unsupported kneeler is more stable than the same applies when you're going and using a support. But that's not always true. So what I'd like you to do is a test. Put out a piece of paper at 30 yards. Take 10 shots kneeling. 10 shots standing and repeat and repeat and repeat and have a look at your groups. Now, I know for a fact that I am better supported standing than I am supported kneeling. And the reason for that is if we look at the base of this tree, there's roots, it's undulating ground because it's a tree. You know, the, the, that's what happens. If I'm standing here, it's much easier for me to get a stable position standing than if it is kneeling. I'm, I'm going to restrict the amount I'm kneeling today because I've just had a procedure on my knee, but we will do some kneeling shots, don't worry. So don't automatically assume that just because your unsupported kneelers are better, the same is going to go with support. So try them both and see how you go. Another thing you need to be very aware of, and this is certainly the case for me, I know for some other shooters, is that when you're in the prone position and when you're in the upright position, do you notice how in prone your head is tilted and up, whereas when you're, up, when you're taking a kneeling or a standing shot, your head is more upright. So this means that you're looking through a different part of your eye when you're looking through the scope because of the tilt of your head. Now, I've got an astigmatism. My eye isn't perfectly round. So when I'm shooting prone, the crosshairs, the pellet will land in a perfectly straight line. But when I am shooting in this position, for some reason, all of my pellets hit slightly left and slightly high. So you will need to make sure that 
your aim points for kneelers and standers are the same as for when you're prone. Again, put out a piece of paper with lines drawn on it vertically and horizontally and put your aim point on, say, the 30-yard mark and shoot it. Does it hit above or below? Then do the same with the horizontal line. Does it hit right to the left? Draw a straight line down, start at the top and just work your way down. If everything hits to the right or to the left, you know you're pulling slightly to the left. Now, there isn't really any way you can alter this. It's to do with your eyes. You're just going to need to learn to deal with it. But it's something to be aware of. All I do is I favour the right-hand side of the kill zone. And they should all go down. It gets tricky when you're shooting in a 20, 30 mile an hour wind because you need to add that little bit on. But just be aware that for some people, not all your pellets are going to hit in a straight line. Okay, pop quiz for you. For those of you who have watched my unsupported kneeler and unsupported stander video, and a huge thanks to everyone who's written in and said that they've really enjoyed it and that they've, uh, they've learned a lot from it. What is the most important rule? Um, I would insert the countdown clock, but I think it's copyright. So play the countdown clock in your head. You had a thought, what's the most important rule? That's it, alignment. And it's the same thing again. This is our tree. Our target is directly in front. So take your position and aim at the target. If you're off twisted round, move your rear foot until you're perfectly in line. And once you're perfectly in line, almost as if you were taking a supported, sorry, an unsupported freestander, then just slide over. You're still in line and you've now got a support. Don't walk up to the tree, take position and then start twisting round because now your body is again fighting what you need to do. Take your position and then just move in, adjust your feet and you're perfectly in line. Alignment, alignment, alignment. Same goes for the kneeler. Align yourself first. Get as close to the tree as you can, align yourself, and then just use your tree as the support. Okay, so the supported stander. Where do we place our feet and how do we hold the tree? I know it sounds silly, but, but we're going to go through it. Right, so as we stated before, we're going to align ourselves onto our target and then we're just going to move our hands. Now, if you notice, I'm essentially in the same position as I would be for an, unsu sorry, for an unsupported stander. Now, for me, that is really stable. I'm fairly close to the tree. I've got a good footing. My knees are slightly bent. I'm aiming slightly to the right of the target because of my dodgy eyes. And there we go. Some people like to get a really wide stance and lean in. Now that can work for them, but if you think about it, we're putting a huge amount of pressure by leaning into the tree on this arm. Now, that is actually a really stable position, but I'm building up fatigue in this arm. You know, I'm 20 stone of idiot and I'm leaning all on one arm. So after a second, even though I'm not really using any muscles, I can already feel pressure on my joints and on my wrist joints and in my shoulder. And again, I'm stable. I'm really stable, but I can feel, you know, I can feel things starting to move. I personally prefer take a position, use the tree as a support, take a deep breath, hold it out. And fire. Now, this is actually something that we didn't really speak about in the unsupported standing video. You're breathing. Now, some people take a deep breath, hold it, lock their diaphragm up, and that gives you a certain amount of stability. I personally don't like it. Um, I'm not a super athlete. I don't know many people who are. 
and actually holding your breath, I think, causes more problems than it does. But it does lock the diaphragm up. It's something you need to try, but you don't want to be holding your breath for more than 10 or 15 seconds. You need to build it into a cycle. Keep your eye on the target, take a deep breath, hold, and you need to aim within, and aim and shoot within, sorry, you need to shoot within 10 to 15 seconds. Any more than that, and you're going to start getting a tremble, you know, lactic acidosis and all of that kind of stuff. But if you can do it, if you've got the lung capacity to do it, give it a try because locking that diaphragm, locking those lungs and holding your breath like that, that does give you a certain amount of stability. It's just personally, it's just not for me, but feel free to give it a try and, and let me know how you get on. Okay, so our unsupported kneeler, we're going to use a bean bag, put it down at the back. So again, align our rifle, kneel down, and get into a comfortable position. Check our alignment. We're still aligned with the target. Again, like the unsupported kneeler, rest your arm along your leg. Then just place your hand on the tree for stability. Line. And as long as you're properly aligned, you can fire. So again, just treat it like an unsupported kneeler. Just use your tree as a support. Ow! There is another form of kneeler that you can do. And that's called a reverse kneeler. Um, I really suck at these, but I will show you how to do it, and then you can go and practice it, and I guarantee you, you're going to be better at it than I am. But I know lots of top shooters do it, it's just my body shape doesn't seem to, to fix it. So the main difference is, you're now using the beanbag on your forward knee, as you can see. So what we'll do is we'll get into position, and now we've got our rear knee as a support. I've got to be really to say, I've got some issues with my knees. Um, you then put your elbow on your rear knee for stability and lean into the tree. Incredibly stable. Um, I'm just no good at it, mainly because I've got a very weak left knee from years of Taekwondo. But that's essentially it. Elbow on the knee, that's supported. Butter the rifle in the shoulder and use the tree as your support. Reverse kneeler, you know it makes sense, I just can't do it. This is our support. We'll get our target down there and there's a bit of brush on the left hand side. We've walked up to the tree, we've looked through, we've taken our grip on our tree, we've looked and there's a very good chance that we might clip something on the way through. So when you're practicing, it's worth learning, as a whole there, it's worth learning how to shoot off the wrong side of the tree. This is especially useful for you left-handers. Now, it's basically difficult. Um, in fact, what we'll do is we'll move the camera around so it's easier for you to see. Okay, so... We need to put a grip on our tree. Now, the problem is you can't really grip it that way because then where do you put the gun? So this is where a shooting glove is really important. You see all this stuff on the back, well, it's grippy. And you see, I'm pushing on my hand there and it's actually quite hard to push along. Whereas with a bare hand, I can slide. That's the advantage with having a grippy glove. This is an Anschutz 110, by the way. So put your grip on the back. Put as much of your body, your arm, whatever you can on the support. Because the more you've got on there, the more grip you're going to have. My arm is sort of slightly bent round because I'm now leaning into it, which is giving me that extra stability. I'm getting as close to the tree as I possibly can. I'm properly aligned. And now... I'm nice and stable and I no longer have the risk 
of clipping the thing on the left on the way through. Now, I'll be honest with you, this is a technique you're going to have to practice and practice and practice. It's not easy. It's something that I've learned over the years, but it's well worth working on. Okay, so pan position. How do we actually grip our support? Well, as I said, alignment is key. So what you can do is just put your hand against the tree with a rifle in your hand and put your thumb. And because you're standing fairly upright, you're not putting a lot of pressure into the tree. You're essentially just using it to support those four fingers. Lovely and stable. If, however, you're taking the, uh, the stance where you're leaning in, that's going to put a lot of pressure on your fingers. So you now need to support your weight. And in which case, you need to bring these fingers out and grip the rifle with your index finger. So again, you pay your money, you take your choice. If you're standing up nice and close, use this position. If you're leaning into the tree, use this position. Or use any position where you can get stability. It is really your choice. Hi, well, thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope this little run through of the supported kneeling and standing has helped you a bit. Um, I do apologize for the fact I couldn't do that much kneeling within the video. Um, I've got a torn meniscus in my left knee and I didn't want to risk damaging it. We've, we've got the British uh, open in a few days, um, but hopefully with the pictures and everything we put through, it gives you a rough idea of, uh, of, of how to do a supported kneeler and stander. Um, a couple of other things uh, that you need to know. You might come up to a target where the support is a hay bale or you know, something that's soft. And people in the past have said, well, can you essentially just rest the entire rifle on top of the support? Well, yes, you can. It's a supported shot. Now, if you're shooting prone, you're not allowed to rest the pistol grip or the hamster on the ground. But within a supported shot, you can essentially do anything you want. Put it on. Dig it into the hay bale, get it nice and stable, and you're golden. It's all good. As ever, please like, share, subscribe, uh, send via Carrier Pigeon this video to anyone you think it will help. Um, it really does help subscribing to the channel and liking the videos. Um, and we want to promote, promote safe shooting on YouTube. So please share this about with anyone you can. Shooting in Country TV. They're a superb bunch of people, and they're really getting behind us in the HFT world. As ever, put in the comments below anything else you'd like me to look at. If you think I've got something wrong today, please feel free to say. Um, come and visit us on Facebook. We've got a little Facebook group, Life at a Range. Uh, we've got our website, lifeatarange.com, and there's tons and tons of videos on shooting and country TV. If there's anything you'd like me to look at, drop me an email at lifeatarange at gmail.com or put it in the comments below and we'll see if we can get it done for the future. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe, shoot straight, and we'll be back in a couple of weeks, hopefully with our HW98 video, um, if I have developed some talent for gunsmithing in the meantime. Take care of yourselves. Ta-da!